going on man what a rad intro that was is there anything that brings us all together more so than tower (laughs) that that band man i just came upon them not too long ago and that's like some of the best shit ever and they're relatively unknown which means we're totally free to use it as much as we want to clearly clearly influenced by dio by the way like if you didn't catch that Definitely the imagery in the video too. Like some yeah. of that shit looks straight out of like the Holy Diver video or whatever, Rainbow in the Dark. But welcome everybody. This is a special show that I don't know if we would have ever done, but our good buddy and baller and shot caller Trey requested this specifically for us three to talk about because we've had issues over the years with storage. I know me and Uncle Bill has. Garrett's got a whole goddamn basement to fucking put all his shit in. So I don't know if he has or not. But um, movie storage, media storage. What do you do, Uncle Bill, when you totally run out of room? And we're going to go with the options. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what the fuck I'm doing on this stream. Because what I do is just jam a bunch of shit into cabinets and stuff. I mean, what in the hell can you do, really? Like, unless I want to build... <laughs> Like that one guy said, knock out my fucking walls and build a whole other like addition onto the house. I don't know anymore. I do have a couple of tips though. Seriously, like no, all kidding aside and everything, but there are a couple yeah. of things that I do. It's yeah. uh, it's a it's a slippery slope, man. I, I think it really just depends on a couple of things when it comes to people. It comes to what you have access to do, um, you know, and, and your your own rules. I think rules are a big thing too, like. Um, everybody's going to be cool with their decisions and, and, and sometimes you have to do things that you don't want to do and break your own rules or whatever. Like for me, like I, I have a lot of space, but I need to be organized or I'm going to drive myself nuts. Like I can't just have stacks upon stacks on the floor and over here. And so like, that's where I'm running into a problem now is I have the space technically, but I don't want to walk down here or walk in here and have just like movies open. Over on top of movies like they need to be organized and categorized in some aspect and that's where i'm running into my issue currently uh right now yeah i mean the there's a lot of different options and we're going to go through those and i don't know i mean i wrote a bunch of them down um because there's many different ways to keep the media and save space and some people think it's fucking blasphemy Some of the stuff that we've talked about in the past. Don't you say it. You know, so bring up binders. My whole thing is. (laughs) Shut them kids up. up. (laughs) Princess Puffins too, boys. Both of them. You know what's weird is that Princess Puffins has been getting a lot of positive feedback on the chat for the show earlier. (laughs) I don't want to, you know, hurt anybody's feelings or anything, but Princess Puffins numbers is beating Steve's. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> sorry steve well i mean true. princess puffins is like a 
whore aficionado, and she doesn't much care for vinegar syndrome. Right I mean, now, so. I liked Steve's uh, little, it was like a brief 11 minute sort of deal. Uh, you know, it, kind of a, uh, recreating the beginning of the never ending story. You remember when Bastion went and hid in the closet and shit to read the book? <laughs> of That's kind of what Steve was yeah. doing. That's funny. I just thought that was the best shit I've ever seen, though. Yeah. And I want to do that next time. I want to print off all the shit off Vinegar Syndrome for his side <laughs> and just have like a paper. <laughs> like a pointer. Like, here's this thing. Well, Where? I brought my iPad so I could remember because so a lot of this stuff I don't remember what in the hell it is. Like this shit, like the, the Picarama stuff and one of their 900 sub labels, sister labels. Just and before we start all the rest of this, though, today was the worst fucking day of that sale. Like, that was just ridiculous. I don't know. I'm sure both of you guys got on there, but, like, there was nothing at all on that sale. <sighs> yeah, I didn't grab anything yet, but I might I might grab a couple things. I, I heard you mention something about some kind of, like, arm wrestling movie. I mean, that that is already intriguing to me. I'll have to check the trailer out. I'll, I'll probably get that and... Um, Killer Delight. I mean, I I almost believe I have the DVD of that, so maybe I'll upgrade. I I don't know. I'll have to look again. Yeah, I had no idea about the one. I think it's called Golden Arm, which is kind of like an over the top ripoff with women as like the the main <laughs> protagonist. He was fucking. He was. <laughs> I wish somebody would have walked in. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> It's like it's like we forced them to do it. Like you're doing <laughs> yeah. this, damn it! Like I don't care. You're gonna lose your job. You're gonna you're gonna step up. He called. <laughs> He's trying to was, hide. He called uh, the Pikarama titles the Peekaboo titles. <laughs> <laughs> Peekaboo, baby. Look at him. Was Look he on his? I didn't. I actually didn't finish watching that stream. Was he on his best behavior at work, or was he? Steve he really was. Steve? He was. It was like he was. You know how he is, like in his regular stream. He was toned down by about fifty percent. He's just kind of. I saw like, him buttoning his button up or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cute. It's like the. You know the. We all had the friends in school that would. It, you know they'd visit your house or whatever, and they would kiss your parents' ass or whatever. Oh yeah. And yeah, then yeah. when they like leave, Eddie Haskell it's like, in the world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Steve for you. That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, we appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Suspiria Knight says, I've never heard someone whisper about rape at their workplace <laughs> until yesterday. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, shit. But <laughs> we got a packed house, already over 100 people in here, and Thank everybody you. is excited about well, how can we save you guys space? Right. Probably the easiest way, and this could be the first option, which I want to get, I want to go do a roll call thing here too before we get started. But what do you guys think about just throwing shit away? Uh, I oh, would never God. throw anything away. I would never throw anything away. I would, yeah, I, th- I would sell it or give it away before I threw it away. I think uh, we all pretty much share the same, you know, thing about throwing stuff away, which is that we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't throw anything away, man. I have. I actually still have one tote of those old wrestling tapes that I used to trade in the nineties back there in the storage building. They're all probably ruined at this point. But hell, I've got shit back there from probably the eighties too. Still, got yeah. It. I mean, I've, I've got. I hear you. I've got like flyers and and you know those uh ads that they used to send us from screener companies from like 2006 2007 that i've still kept Mm -hmm. i mean it's ridiculous yeah for sure but uh, we're gonna go through the chat here see who we got we got ken carlson pablo papano lepke vision films what is up sir what up man jackson jack jacob courtenhouse the stunt man Mark himself, Wonder This World 97, e Carlos, e oh. Carlos. Tra- Trey's 842. I think he was the dude that requested this show. So here you go, sir. It took about a month and a half, but we're getting to it. Bradley Taylor, uh, Vanderhoff 66FU, Vander Beauregard 77. Skull Crusher, brother. Ooh. That horror critic, Wild Wrangler, J7 Flesher. Got a packed crowd tonight, boss. The Afro yeah, people, Whale. People Gus, are chiming in big time over here. Gus Amaretti, 
Dylan, what is up, young man? And um, yeah, so it's going to be a fun discussion tonight. And another thing that's going to be really interesting because a week from tomorrow night, Oh, listen, yes, I, listen, I love Friday the 13th, <laughs> oh, but man. God damn, am I tired of like talking about Friday the 13th just in general. <laughs> Jesus, man. I mean, I don't get me wrong. Friday, when, it, when an actual Friday the 13th comes around, it's great, but shit. So you're sick of Friday the 13th, is what you're saying? I've been sick of Friday the 13th for a while and Halloween and Scream. <laughs> And Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And, I'm not sick of. I think Friday the Thirteenth is like. I think that that's one franchise. Like like you said, if a new movie came out, I'd be very interested in checking that. Just simply because it's been so long. Uh, what has it been like? 13, 14 years at this point. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I like talking about Friday, but again, I, I I'm newer at this, so you guys have probably talked it a lot, right? So to me, I'm kind of like, oh, gives us a reason to talk Friday the Thirteenth. I'm down with that, but. I also haven't spent years and years chatting about it either. That's true. We've been around a long time, Garrett. It's gotten to the point, though, with Friday the 13th, where now you've got all these hipsters that come in and, like, champion, like, you know, even the most awful Friday the 13th. They're like, Jason X is, like, the best one of the series or fucking Freddy versus Jason or stuff like that. It's like, There's no, a uh, Friday no, the 13th not. in October as well. You know, I think, here's what I would do, though. Like, somebody asked about the next installment of Friday the 13th, right? Friday the 13th in October, okay? Hire those motherfuckers that did Never Hike Alone. Give them $2 million to make a fucking Friday the 13th movie mm. and bring it out. It's coming out in October. What do you yeah. guys think? I mean, they, they did a great job for what they had access to. Um, imagine, like you said, imagine if they had a big budget behind them. They could they could probably do some good things. Clearly, clearly, the, <laughs> clearly the demand for a mutilator sequel is high. It's higher. I watched that trailer today, by the way. Oh my god, dude. You know what, what were they supposed, what were they supposed to do with it though? That's the thing. Like just not do it. <laughs> is that yeah, what well, that the done it. What but the I mutilator mean, sequel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I saw the trailer. It was, you know, it's very low budget. But I mean, I, at the same time, I'm kind of like, well, what, what was the expectation like for, for a movie didn't... like that? You know what I mean? Like, it was already low budget as it was. Like to do a sequel now, like it had to have been crap. Well, like the budget had to have been. Here's the problem, though. Like the original Mutilator, I'm sure had a really low budget, and it's not a great film or anything like that. But it was at least like it. It looked like a film. Like this, just kind of looks like. It looks like Jeepers Creepers Reborn is what it fucking looked like to me. I didn't see it, so I wouldn't know. I didn't watch it. I mean, it's the like, quality uh, of it. It reminds me of I Spit on Your Grave, uh, Deja Vu. That's almost exactly that how it's filmed. Oh, really? In that okay. way. Yeah. It does look a step up from uh, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow, too, but not very much of a step. I'll at least give it that. But You'll yeah. see. You need to do a, a reaction video for that trailer. Me? Yes. You I watched the trailer for Mutilator too. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Oh, it. you did? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I just it does look, you know, it looks cheap, but I mean, I don't know what. It's hard because, like, you're right. Like, Mutilator was really low budget back in the day, but I think it it worked still because a lot of movies that were coming out were kind of in a similar situation, so it kind of felt like it, it fit right in. Where now, you know, the movies there's big budgets; they look a certain way. And, you know, that one just kind of, it does look a lot like a lesser quality. And I think it's probably going to be in the same situation as like Night of the Scarecrow 2, where it's only going to have a, like a specific niche audience, you know, that's going to check that thing out, you know. Yeah. I will say it's. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> I mean, just because. <sighs> oh, yeah, I'll definitely check it out for yeah. sure. It, well, it's not coming out in the theaters. It's going to oh, be right. one of those. Maybe an original Vinegar Syndrome <laughs> do, release. Do you think they're going to play that? I bet they do. They got to. They've got to, yeah. It's an they're updated version it. of that, yeah. That'd be yeah. sick. Like a it's ska what, version of that. It's the version that I did. I sent it to them, and they're going to use it for the uh, <laughs> opening credits. Yeah. Instead of the uh, kazoo, they have a saxophone back in. <laughs> All 
All right, well, so storage. When and I, just to give give everybody a backstory on this, so a lot of the, you youngsters in here have just started. Like I watched Mel's video, which I highly recommend. She's she worked on her movie room and everything, and she had literally all of her movies piled up there. And I was like, damn, I wish that I only had that many movies, just because it, the, the storage for this thing. I've been collecting this shit for twenty three years at this mm-hmm. point. The year 2000, mm-hmm. I got a DVD player, and I can remember my very first DVD shelf. It was just so small, and I loved it. I was like, oh, shit, look look at the movies that I've got. And it quickly, quickly got out of hand. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think I'm in the exact same boat. Um, I remember getting a DVD player probably around 2000 as well. I remember the first title I got was Fright Night. The second one was Exorcist. And the third one was Scary Movie. Like those were the first three that I remember getting. And, you know, things just every Tuesday I would go out and I would continue to buy every week, every week. And there'd be sales. And we kind of grew up in a good time where like it got to a point where you'd go into a store. There was a lot of used DVD stores where I was a lot. So I would go out on a Tuesday, grab a couple new releases, and then scroll through like the horror section and the used and pick up tons of stuff that were like $199, $299. So like you would leave there sometimes with like 20 titles to add to your collection. Like I was buying anything that I that I knew or didn't know that was horror. Like it was just it was wild. Now it's not as accessible, number one, I feel like. And number two, prices are not anywhere like they were back then to get kind of like a used used item at least around me there's no used stores anymore um to get this stuff so yeah i was building a collection pretty quick and at at that time i was living at home i had just a bedroom and uh, you know i remember i got all these shelves that kind of went against the wall and they were like those ones that you could like they were like metal and you screwed them into the wall side by side and they kind of floated or whatever and i filled those suckers up and then i had this whole big vhs um storage thing it was like a big shelving system that it was all vhs tapes so i started piling everything on the floor and then at that point i was like you know what i've gotta i've gotta get rid of these vhs because i need this shelf so that's where the purge of like my vhs in like 2007 2008 came where i basically for 80 bucks gave some dude like two to three hundred freaking vhs tapes and i literally like it's like one of the biggest regrets that I have now I had some great stuff in there and um, it's it that's where I put a lot of my DVDs and stuff like that to kind of keep it going another thing um, I did which I think is a pretty cool idea is you know based on where you are like putting a shelf that's like about a little bit bigger than a DVD just because again if things are different sizes and I ran it along like the top of my room like around the, the ceiling almost and then just like lined them all up so they were all, they were like up above and it was kind of a cool concept because you had the whole perimeter of the room. Like there was, even if you had posters, you could put them underneath and uh, that worked out really well. But, um, you know, eventually that, that got full too. And and then I moved into my first place, which was a condo. And I had a whole like set up in my basement. We built like these wall to wall shelves. And um, that's kind of was the next step for me at that point. Um, so I haven't, really had the issue and it's almost like i don't have the issue for a while and then all of a sudden it it comes back again i have to make new decisions so i don't want to talk about just me so we'll move on to you kind of about you know what was your first issue that you had when it came like where were you and uh and stuff like that because i can then eventually just tell you what i'm doing now like when you guys first started noticing like shit was getting out of hand like when you guys are probably still at home too right yeah yeah, and some of the early Dead Pit videos, <clears throat> from what the way that we shot some of those real, like, you know, the, or, what was it, 2007 YouTube videos, you can see the Dead Pit studio, and I had a big video store rack I at that, that point yeah. in time. Which I have now. Which, <laughs> which uh, I fucking bought off you. Well, no, that's, a, that's another one. Oh, is that a different that, one? I'm talking about that big metal one that has. Oh, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that one was had, awesome. It was yeah. two sided. It would hold like two thousand movies, I think, or something like that. A crazy amount of movies. And when I filled that fucking thing up, I was like, I I don't know what I'm going to do. So at that point, I just started like I had a separate room that had the Blu-rays and the HD DVDs, 
And that was on a custom made shelf that I had a buddy of mine make that is eight foot tall and like six foot wide. He probably and, charged you three thousand dollars for it because I know. Yeah, it and I had that big metal rack. <laughs> yeah, it was expensive. <laughs> yeah. Had that big metal rack, and eventually I replaced it with this big motherfucker back here, which was another one that's like eight foot by. I think that one's eight foot by eight foot or eight foot by seven foot or something like that. Gigantic. Um, and that's what I advise people. Like if you're going to have a large collection and you want it to look good, like, uh, our buddy pop has done this a couple of times. He's gotten people to custom build shelves. Mm. So that, you know, if you want to save space, that's one way to do it. Get somebody to build you some floor to ceiling shelves, because at least that way you can hold the most, uh, movies and the most, you know, in the maximum amount of space that you've got. So I, I totally agree with what he said about the floor to ceiling shelves are a freaking game changer. Find an empty wall and just get them custom done. That's what I did uh, at my first condo. That's what I've done here. And um, it, it, it's, it's the easiest way to get the most out of your, out of your space at that point. But you've got to find a wall that you can say, Hey, this is what it's going to be dedicated towards. Mm -hmm. um, and how about, how about you, UB? Well, when we first, like, I can tell you exactly when I knew that there was going to be a problem is when we first started doing the show and started getting screeners and things like that. Because up to that point, like, it was fairly easy to, you know, keep up with. But when you've got, like, companies sending you shit every week almost. Now, I'm not talking about great companies, but still yet, like, we were keeping a lot of this stuff. Then I knew pretty early on, like, I was going to have to do something. So I had my uncle build, and you can see it in a lot of the videos that I did, like, the poster collection and some of the other like early really early videos that i did from like my room back when i was living at home too um he built like a floor to ceiling kind of like it was a mixture of like a dvd blu-ray shelf but in the middle it had like a cutout where you could hang like a poster and then you could set like bigger kind of items in that so it was like that was the kind of setup that it was like so I had like a poster in the in the front and then I had like all the Blu-rays going all the way down the, the top and the sides and the bottom was albums. The bottom was like lined up with vinyl and stuff like that. Um, I wish I still had that damn thing, but it's it, I never took it with me or anything like that when I moved out. But so moving up here, well, I can still remember selling all my VHS tapes in a fucking yard sale like that was yesterday, which was one of the biggest regrets that I have like <laughs> of anything that I've because I had like tubs of VHS tapes, like literal, you know, those big, like Walmart rubber made kind of like tubs yeah. that you could get. Yeah. Probably three or four of those completely filled with VHS tapes and just put them all in the yard sale and sold them all like for, I think it was 50 cents or something like that. Like maybe a dollar. I don't remember. Like this was probably 2000, Nine, well, the problem was around that time, like the same thing with me, dude, is like you couldn't fucking give VHS tapes away. That's the that was the problem back then is that they weren't valuable. They weren't even sought after at that point. It was like you'd go to Blockbuster and they'd be trying to just get rid of all their old VHS tapes, like five for, you know, five, five movies for like three dollars or whatever. Like you couldn't get like you couldn't give them away so that's where i think we got into trouble is like we were looking at these things like they were worthless and yep. i think the same thing happened with things like cassette tapes vinyls for a while like it was almost like the new the new product cds are here nobody wants this old shit you can just you couldn't even give them away and i i think that's where we both ran into problem is that we did we gave them away for nothing because that's all that we could do at that point well, and now looking back on it and you're like if i would have just waited like three years like things changed a lot when it came to that. Well, people don't realize though, is that back at the, when DVD first came out and got really popular, like nobody wanted anything to do with VHS tapes. It wasn't like right. there was a market to collect them or anything. Right. People were just like, all oh, these things suck. Let's just like pack them up, get rid of them, like put them somewhere. <laughs> like it just wasn't like it is now. So like I, everybody was getting rid of VHS. Like everybody was getting rid of all their stuff. And unfortunately, like I got rid of, I think 95% of everything that I had, I maybe kept like a couple of things in there that I've still got, but, and then DVDs, like when, you know, DVD shifted to Blu-ray and yada, yada, yada. Like I had to move all, took all my DVDs out of all the shelves, put them in storage bins, move them out to the garage, which is where they're currently at right now. 
And then all I've got is Blu-ray and 4K in the house. And I've got, like, I think that's like an eight-foot shelf, isn't it? CK, the one I bought off you? Yeah, it's it's a, it was a video store shelf, I think, from Movie yeah. Gallery, if I'm not mistaken. And that's a massive fucker, too. Um, so I've got that in the living room, like, filled. I've got, like, a bunch of the smaller kind of shelves filled, uh, like the put-together shelves that you can get, like, at Walmart, like the six-foot kind of jobs um and here recently man like I've, I've just been running out of shit like of any kind of room like whatsoever so i'm i'm looking into like trying to like you were doing like buy some sort of like rotating something that you can actually mm -hmm. like fill up that takes up less space well, i know um a lot of people i think the channel's still up if you go to uh, beyond the realms youtube page he was the first one that i saw that had like a budget friendly uh, shelf that anybody that is halfway good with, you know, woodworking and stuff like that, not me. Cause I couldn't even make a fucking uh, birdhouse or whatever back in the day for FFA, but he has a pretty good video. <laughs> yeah. He has a pretty good video on making that shelf at, I think it's with uh, a couple of two by fours mounted to the wall and, you know, so some, see the one that did like that little strip and it did, they just kind of sit. Oh, I remember was, that video from back first, when I was trying to figure my yeah. stuff out. Yeah. I think he was the first one that did that. There was a lot of people that did that afterwards, but he was the first one that I remember that did it. So mm -hmm. you don't have to have a gigantic amount of money. If, if mm -hmm. you know what you're doing to get custom mm -hmm. equipment put in. Yeah. That was a really, really good video um, that he did there. And like you said, to have someone that's handy, right. That helps. Like my father is, he can do anything. So all I do is I just figure out a, a situation. Like I have an idea. We, we measure it out. We get dimensions and then he builds it. And you know, that's what we did with those huge shelves. Like I have, I have a movie library here basically, which there's two wall to wall shelves for all the way from ceiling to floor, wall, side to side um, filled right now. It's, you know, horror on one side and everything else on the other side. So it's mostly DVDs though. It's like, it's actually 90% DVDs still. Um, then I have this other section that's kind of like floor to ceiling. Um, and it's all my Blu-rays and 4Ks and stuff. Now I could build more in there. I could get shelves that go in the middle of the room because it's just a library room. There's nothing else really going on in there. So I could technically buy shelves and have them like in the middle of the floor, like a video store. I just haven't got to that road yet but That's what i've been doing this level right there man <laughs> what yeah it is. i know right in the middle of the floor but in, <laughs> in this room here i've created a lot of stuff like with mini shelves like if you can see this one back here he built that my dad built that yeah. so what i did was like i i had the posters up and i was like i i could easily have made this all i thought about making this all dvds but I'm such a big like poster guy now and I wanted this to look a certain way that I was like, you know what, let's just do posters and then we'll build underneath it or whatever. So, you know, and that could already I could have put that all the way across as well. Um, but I have like, for instance, I have another shelf here. I have a small shelf here um, in this room itself. And that's holding most of my like boutiques like behind me is all screen factory. This over here is Arrow. This is Steelbooks. And I have Vinegar Syndrome over there. So. I mean, it, it's getting creative with what you have. Like every shelf that's in this room is built specifically for a certain area. So the height and size and and when you see my movie room tour, you're going to see kind of the the unique shelf I have for my vinegar syndrome stuff right now that I that was built out of like necessity. Like, hey, look, there's dead space right there that nothing's going on. And I'm going to build a shelf inside that to make it more, you know, like like it's doing something basically. And um, I don't want to give it away now. I want you guys to see like what I did there, but it's an easy way to gain a little bit more uh, shelf space. And um, like I said, I'm just really trying to avoid having stuff on the floor. So what I have done recently, which I tried to avoid as much as I could was I started going through my DVDs and I started with the non horror first and everything I had upgraded to Blu-ray. I, I bought one of those plastic bins at Walmart and I started toting them. Because like we talked about, we're in a stage right now where DVDs are worthless. So you're either going to get into that situation that we were in with VHS and sell them off for dirt cheap. And then all of a sudden in five years, people, for whatever reason, is like, we want those DVDs again. You're like, shit, I can't believe I did that. 
Maybe so, that never happens. I don't know. I, no. Listen, I want to I want to piggyback off that for a second because <laughs> I had to do something similar to that with like a lot of my older Blu-rays and a lot of the snapper case, like, you know, things that I had that were like not fitting anywhere. So if, you know, you go into any kind of like department store, any kind of like Walmart, anything like that, and they have those plastic kind of like three tier shelves that oh, yeah, pull, yeah, yeah, that yeah, pull yeah. out. And I just, I've just put a lot of like different, like older Blu-rays and things like that into those and kind of like set them up too, because it doesn't take up any room. It's eight that you stack them on top of each other. Like if you need to, and you can fit like, I don't know, man, I think it's like between two to 300 in those things too. So, I mean, just in terms of like storage and I'll tell you another thing that I did, and this is going to sound batshit crazy too, but I recommend that anybody do this. Walmart sells, I think they're called like American something American. Something. Anyway, they're gun safes. Okay, they're like my God. <laughs> they're relatively cheap. They're about two hundred dollars. They're about five, six feet tall, something like that, and they're fireproof. They're resistant to you know like all kinds of temperature things like that. So they're for you know you to keep guns in, of course. Anything valuable that's like over hundred bucks, like a couple hundred bucks, I put in that damn thing, lock it up. You have your house. Dogma Blu-ray in there. Well, I've got all my comics. Because I've got some, I've got like the first X Men, like a, a lot of really good, like first edition comics still. I've got all my comics in there. I've got all my cards in there. I've got all my like really expensive Blu rays, all the toys that actually, you know, your lenticular bushy, call them toys, uh, slipcover. Exactly. So, Action yeah. figures, I'm sorry. Your neck is. <laughs> my neck is, yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, but just because if the house catches on fire, at least there'll be that. I still have, <laughs> so, I still have that. another <laughs> option that that i wanted to mention because i know none of us do this because we're not i don't think we're you know techy enough to pull this off steve may be able to do it i don't know uh don may jr is uh, with his collection i don't know if you guys knew this or not he puts it all into a media center so he digitally rips all of his shit and has it on plex or something like that so what would you think about you know, if you're toting your movies, ripping them to this media center, much like, you know, you could like Plex or something. And then that way you've got it to watch if you need it. Because let's be honest, once we put these movies in totes and shit, we're not, I, most of the stuff we're never going to pull out again. You're not going to be able to find what you're looking for. Uh, so what do you guys think about that option? Uh, I would never do that personally because I, I want to have this. So the only things I'm toting is something I own in another format like i'm not toting anything that i that i don't have somewhere else like like i would never even if it's even if it's something i'm not going to watch quite often but i mean the only thing i have in totes is like doubles of like hey i just got this on 4k or blu-ray or whatever and that's all i'm toting right now except like there are um some that i'm not going to tote like for instance all my anchor bays are staying on the shelf together all my halloweens all my friday 13s like all the big name things that i had bought like you know, evil deads, all that stuff like that's all staying. But like if I bought, let me just think like, for instance, I might go and buy for $10 killer delight tonight from, from vinegar. Syndrome. I already bought it. That's the only one I bought today. So I'll put that in my vinegar syndrome shelf. There's a little bit of room and then I will take killer delight DVD out of my horror thing and I'll tote it up. Right. So like that, that I'll do, um, for sure. But you know, I don't know much about, I don't know much ab about, oh, I love that figure. Um, disc rot. I saw someone mention that in here. My uncle talks about that a lot. And he seems to think that disc rot is going to really hurt Blu-rays and 4Ks. And that's when he thinks things like DVDs are going to kind of come back is when this newer format starts getting like issues with the discs where DVD is going to stay pretty clean i don't know that's his theory on stuff that he's read um i haven't noticed any problems with any of my stuff yet uh they're in a pretty good room so i don't think weather or anything's going to do anything to them but um i don't know I, I i think that we might get into a position where again dvds are sought after maybe specific ones become valuable maybe not like you know um 
50 first dates on DVD, like it's probably not going to become like of a thing of value, right? Sports. You know, like, that real like, that, cool like, Talladega <laughs> but like it could be anything like maybe, Borat. you know, the first, like when we did the anchor Bay, like maybe the first evil dead that was ever released on DVD is almost looked at as like something somebody wants, right? Like who knows? So that's why I'm very hesitant about selling anything off unless it's like something very mainstream or, common or something like that i might pile up and say hey these these are some i'll i'll sell off um at some I, point um, but i'd never have, rip it personally i wanted to ask uncle bill in particular and uh, hey, you can chime in on Lord. this too what do you guys think is worse is it disc rot or is it crotch rot <laughs> <laughs> what do you think is worse <laughs> uh ub can talk about it <laughs> what the fuck thanks for <laughs> Yeah, skipping that one on to me. What is worse, folks? Uh, disc rot versus crot trot in the. Well, I've never had disc rot. Yeah. I <laughs> crot trot, yeah. It's rough, man. But like the whole idea of the disc rot situation, like I've never encountered that. But my dick demon is falling over, like it is almost <laughs> touching the ground. That's the only thing I've ever had any problem with, like in terms yeah. of deterioration. It's my fucking dick demon falling off over here. I bet you'll never get a replacement on that dick no, demon. No, I'm pretty sure after we put all that stuff up and they figured out it was me, I'm never going to get that replaced. But I know. That's why I was hoping that maybe you just waited until you got it before you started ranting and ranting. Nah. Yeah. What's the fun in that? Yeah. I um, I'll beat you to death with a dick demon soon. So some other options, though, guys. I mean, it's important for me to, like I was saying, be able to find some of this stuff. So I was mentioning earlier, I brought some fucking props. Don't you, don't you dare show the freaking! Oh my god, that hurts my soul. Look at bro. this. You can store what? all okay. kinds of movies. Listen, <sighs> back in the day, that's what you put your CDs in, man. I bet you money, Garrett never used those for CDs either. Oh no, I did, but the, oh, the issue was my CD still stayed in the rack, and the the, the case still was visible, but the <laughs> disc just went to one of those. Had, so so like, let me get this are, straight. You had all the the cases lined up, but then you had yes. like the disc, like in the uh, okay. Correct. Yeah. And then I would yeah. bring it in my car, and then that was actually. I, you know what's funny is I still have my CD one, like right here. I see it right now. It's under my table, with all like the burnt CDs that I made throughout the years. Uh, it's still full to the brim with them, like with all of them. And that thing was used to be in my car back in the day. I just again talk about not get wanting to get rid of anything, like. Half of those probably don't even work anymore for all I know, but I'm like, ah, you know, for sentimental value, I'm just going to keep that thing over there. Do you have any um, Creed? But I never have done it with movies. I, I just. <laughs> you know, he's got some Creed. Everybody had Creed. Oh, hell yeah. Do I have Creed? Wow. Yeah, yeah. I might. I don't know. Creed. And so somebody, same. wait, on a serious note, though, somebody brought up this, and I've always been kind of curious about this, too, because this is a big issue for like guns and shit as well. Um, humidifiers. Gun kicks tonight, huh? Well, I mean, I collect guns as well as everything else. So, <laughs> I am in Kentucky. Like, <laughs> my God. Remember when, you, remember when you pulled one out on that guy? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> Get off so, my property. <laughs> I really did say that. Like, Get out of my yard. I actually told him that if he didn't get the fuck away from the door, I was going to fucking shoot him. <laughs> but that's a whole other story for a different uh, day. Um, so, humidifiers. Like in terms of like keeping the humidity and things like that at a certain level, because like that idea has been brought up by different people on different streams and things too. So, I mean, do you, either one of you guys do anything like that? Like mm-hmm. in terms of like storage or anything? No, I mean, I may, I don't, I don't think I need to because everything in here is, you know, it's pretty, the temp levels are pretty good. Um, even in the, in the summer, um, I don't think I'm going to need that. I mean, unless all of a sudden I grab a DVD out of the shelf that's been sitting there for X amount of years that I haven't looked at. I open it up and it's completely rotted on the inside. Then I might be like, oh, shit, maybe there is an issue. But I haven't noticed anything. Um, You know what I did notice, actually, that you mentioned that? I don't know if it has to do with a weather thing or just a, a bad product thing is like... For instance, I had a rest, I had rest, I have wrestling figures, right? Or, or, for instance, I have figures in packages. Um <laughs> uh what do you recommend like gorilla glue you think yeah i think gorilla glue would work you put some nail polish on it and then it's fine after that yeah anyway. but according um, to that uh 
well, I don't, I don't want to give him promotion or anything, but he's got way more followers than us. He says, that's an excellent set. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, he highly recommend set. it because they sing it. <laughs> yeah. um, all yeah, TJ Frizz is right. Like my state is is not like maybe a Kentucky or, or where other people may live. So temperature is pretty controlled uh, more or less. But I did all of a sudden one day was in there and I was like looking through something and I saw like some figures. I'm like, what the hell? And I had like um, a wrestling figure. It was a girl. I forget which one it was. But her hair completely was like turned white in the package. I'm like, what the heck mm. happened here? Like, I don't know if it was like mm. the – like had to do with weather or or what it, the temp was in that room or like I think a lot of a this stuff too is, is based on yeah if, what material they were using too right because that reminded me I don't know if Uncle Bill if you remember this like we used to get screeners all the time from the asylum that company oh, made yeah. more movies than any company known to man they were all very very bad cheaply put together and another example of that is the discs right so. I used to keep all of them for a while and then we started selling them at conventions or just giving them to people or whatever. But there was one, I think it was called when a killer calls. It was their version of when a stranger oh, I have, calls. I have that. Movie. Uh, yeah. um, so I was, I just pulled it off the shelf and I swear to God, that thing crumbled like peanut brittle. The disc it did or the art? The case. The case fell apart. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What the hell is it made out of? I don't know. It was Eat like completely in pieces when I pulled it out. <laughs> I was like, I don't know my own strength, Bulls. What's going on here? But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the times, too, like you meet, I think with DVDs and CDs and any of that sort of thing, like the only damage you would see maybe would be with the case itself. Like it might get dry rotted or crotch rotted or whatever. And you might may need to replace that, but uh, VHS tapes and stuff like that's very different. I don't think you could, you know, those get molded and everything else. You know, what's well, funny is that I see what Jason said here. Yeah. Um, I've never had any issues with masks yet. Um, not well, at all. I mean, I don't have masks from like way back in the day, but I mean, I think I still have a bag in my attic of like Halloween masks that I had as a kid. And I think they're still fine. I don't think that they're, they're wrecked or anything but i mean again it's been a couple of years since i've looked at them but have you guys found that a lot of your masks are getting wrecked no but i mean here's the issue with masks in terms of like storage like and i've not done a very good job with these over here but in general like you want to keep them somehow or another like a couple of different things like away from any kind of like direct heat source away from any kind of direct like water, like any kind of dampness or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And definitely you want to have them like condition on something. Like some people use mannequin heads. Some people use right. like two liter bottles, whatever the fuck you've got. You want to yeah. have them like actually not folded because when they're folded together like that over long periods of time, which like I, I fucking have some over here like that, what ends up happening is, is that they get, it ended up getting like hardened and creased in certain spots and things like that. They kind of melt together almost. You do not want that to happen. So yeah, I mean that to me, masks are the hardest thing to keep like up in terms of like mm -hmm. storing anything. The oldest mask I've got is the one that was used in the Haddonfield movie. It's a Michael Myers mask that stays up there and um, it has hardened a little bit and it's kind of dried out a little bit. But I think that the problem with the masks dry rot and everything too is it's real it happens quicker to the really thin latex masks the ones that are like mass produced hmm. so that's why it was so hard to find like some of those old shatner masks still intact and stuff from the 70s is because that was like a really thin mask it was not very thick at all so most of the time like uncle bill was saying kids threw them under the bed or in the closet or whatever and they were just laying flat and just got wrecked that way mm -hmm. but we're talking about media though well we ain't talking about masks how'd that happen I yeah so that, i well i'm just talking about storage storing anything i guess related. i think one of the biggest story. tricks is is definitely just tr not trying to keep everything in the sense of you know like i said like right now i'm I, I hated to do it but i'm taking my upgrades and i'm replacing them with you know, my DVDs with the Blu-ray and just getting that out. If I've got new ones, even same thing with screen factory. Like I'm at a point now where if I'm going to buy the 4k, that DVD, that Blu-ray is going on eBay. Like it, it's stupid for me to have both like, at this point, because there's not enough 
difference between the two besides the cover art and all that other stuff. Like I just sold From Beyond. Um, I've sold Army of Darkness. I've sold Texas Chainsaw 2. Like, because at this point, the, those things are still somewhat sought after for people that are trying to complete their collections with the slip covers and stuff. So it's it's silly for me to keep holding on to those and have two of the same thing basically on a shelf. I just don't have have time for that anymore. I don't care about that anymore. Maybe at one point I would have, but um, I think that's what most people have to try to do is just not try to keep everything. Well, unfortunately, um, there's people that exist like CK over here who fucking won't throw anything away for any reason. You don't so, either. Well, I, me too, motherfucker, but I'm saying like... Oh, I won't throw anything yeah, away. I'll, I'll sell it or I'll, I'll do it in a giveaway or I'll I, trade it into a store to buy something else. Like, I'll never throw it away. No. I mean, I Or can't. even like, here's the thing, though, man. If I'm being honest, like, I even have trouble, like, selling anything. Like, even if it's something that's coming out... Like new, like for instance, like this stuff with the with the From Beyond stuff and the Blu-ray and the 4K and all. I even have trouble like getting rid of the old Blu-rays because I'm sitting there thinking to myself like, what if the 4K sucks or like what if it like it looks? I hear awful you, man. And, I, you know, I have real. that that same fight in my head back and forth when I I hate doing it, but I know I have no choice. Like, I even have a stack that I haven't sold yet or put up on eBay or whatever that I'm thinking. You know, maybe we do the auction. I'll try to sell them as a lot. Like I have like a stack of Blu-rays that I had already upgraded to 4K. I just don't, I have to be pickier with the space. And um, I have different things I can do here. Like I have an, a whole nother wall in my library that's that's just got autographs on it. Like from ceiling to floor, autographs. And I look at it and I said, what do I do with this wall? It's an, it's an open wall. Do I go wall to wall shelves? But then if that's the case, then I don't have any where to put the autographs they just stay in a binder so what i want to keep them displayed do i want to so well, i'm do... trying to kind of work around having to do that um there's plenty of other things too I'm, I'm a little more picky than i was uh back in the day with what i'm buying now because of similar situations like space and before when i was collecting dvds i was buying everything everything horror i didn't know i didn't care if it was good bad if i had a different version of it i, I was buying it Mm -hmm. And I just have to just be a little more picky now with what I'm doing. But uh, with that being said, I had just, I told you guys, I am having problem with space right now. I'm trying to organize and condense a little bit because I don't want things to be on the floor. But I just recently bought something um, on Amazon, which is a shelf that it spins. So it's almost like one of those shelves you would see back in the day at a video store, you know, where you'd push or like at a pharmacy that had VHS tapes or whatever. And you spin it around. And I got one of those that's white and it'll, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of space. It's going to go like right here in this room where there's kind of like dead space. And I think it said it held 600 Blu-rays. And that's right now like a pretty good, you know, amount that, that I will be able to put in there and still have a lot of extra space left over. Like, I don't think I have 600 that I, that I'm, that's going to fit in there right now, which is a good thing. It's nice to, to look around and see that you have shelf space to work with, you know, it's a good feeling. Pop needs but, to buy about five. Getting of him. there is tough. <laughs> what? I said Pop needs to buy about five of him for two. <laughs> well, that's what happens if this thing goes. You know what I mean? Like, I I'm hoping that with that, a lot of the stuff that I'm buying is just going to be upgrades. You know, that's what I'm hoping is because if they if they are upgrades at this point, then I'll just start toting away the DVDs and maybe someday selling them hopefully you know but if not that i have like storage space that i can just kind of stack the totes up in a different part of uh you know in the basement or whatever so that's kind of where i'm at right now um before we continue on though we do have like 185 people in here right Woo! Now. <laughs> so it's a you good collectors, time you crazy collected so we Jesus. jumped up to 196 it's almost going to 200 boys let's yeah. go to 200 let's we'll just be there right now. come share on this share this stream tell your friends yeah. like yeah because we've been collecting like i don't want to age us but we've been collecting longer than most people in here have probably been alive boys. so we we know a thing or two about a thing or two we've got friends in this town they tell us things mm. also trade speaking of which so i wanted to ask you all about like how do you feel about this is a relatively new kind of phenomenon, but like storing um, either Blu-rays or still books in these protective cases, like they, they now sell like the protective kind of like 
the baggies? No, like the the actual hard plastic kind of like cases. Okay, I'm going to tell you about that. Personally, if I was to get to that point that I felt like I needed to bag a, a movie. Yes. Right. You're talking about yeah, those, I, the, the Mylar cases. Yeah. Yeah. If I got to a point where I felt like that needed to be done, I would do it that way. <laughs> I would do it that way. I would pay the extra money. And I would do it the way with those cases rather than the plasticky things. I mean, that to me, like I've talked about before, for my personal, I don't want to walk into my collection and just see all these bags all over the place. It's going to look like I'm in like a, a used DVD store. And I would rather have something that looked like that because when yeah. those are inside those plastic things, it almost looks – it look they look nice. Like they look protective. They look – like they're a piece of, of a valuable piece. It doesn't look like you're just throwing shit in there with like shrink wrap on it. Like that's just me. I would go the extra mile and I would I would buy those expensive cases. Gus, um, super chat, appreciate it, man. He's. Well, what do you what that. do you guys think, Gus? Thank you, man. <laughs> well, for the longest time, man, up until the point when uh, they started making the or those newer ones kind of got. I think it's called Echo Tech or something like that. The newer ones kind of got popular that like protect your still books. Like what I would do is just wrap shit in bubble wrap. If I was going to like <laughs> store it or anything like that, but it clearly makes that noise when you clearly that's it. not ideal for like, you know, display. So, you know, uh, but just trying to keep things protected and things like that before those got popular. Uh, but I love them though. I love that. Cause I, I got a couple of them uh, sent to me that way. And I was like, well, these things are pretty awesome. Like the actual hard plastic kind of stuff. Right, 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 right. right. That, that cover the steel books. So I started kind of trying to buy more of those lately. Like, like I, I mean, I got the, I got some for my box sets. Like, those. I mean, right, right, it like looks that. nice. Like, this looks really slick, right? Like, yeah. it's yeah. it looks like, um, you know, if you were buying a baseball card back in the day, the nice ones would be in, like, the hard plastics or whatever. And it almost make it look like it's something of value. But if this was just here in some kind of, like, plastic bag, I feel like that almost downgrades what that item is, you know? And then um, you can't so really take go good photos of your collection either because the glare from all those goddamn bags, you know. Yeah, and I know they're more good. expensive, and that's why people aren't doing it that way. I mean, you can buy, I think, like 500 bags for what it costs to probably get, like, you know, 50 of those <laughs> or something, you know? like. So, I mean, that's yeah, a big deal. You're never going to fucking ever live this down, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Did I... Ziploc. <laughs> some, Ziploc made some weight. They, they actually are really good for the box sets. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you just get um, some Ziploc storage gallon bags. But yeah, um, I'm all down for that. I'm actually ordering more of those plastic things for some of my some of my nicer sets. Um, yeah, they actually would say have them I, for the limited edition arrows now too. I think somebody. Yeah, I might. I might get some more of those. Steel books would be another one I would maybe consider because those can get damaged pretty easy. Um, but I would. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna bag anything. The bags, uh, though, I was going to mention there's another option, and it's space saving, right? Okay, so I did this for uh -oh. my snapper cases, which I absolutely fucking hate. And a lot of you people may not even know what snapper cases are, but they're those little shitty Warner Brothers, I think, and HBO, and there were a couple other companies. I think Image did them. The cardboard DVD cases with the little snap thing in the front, right? So a lot of the uh, Eastwood stuff was like that. So what I did, I took the damn snapper thing apart and put it in this little plastic sleeve, right? He's, save he's space. destroying it and shit. Save space. <laughs> I don't you know can, if that's going to fly with anybody. Listen, rip your shit in half and store it this way. I didn't rip it. I didn't tear anything up. If somebody wanted to buy those little plastic things again and put it together, they could do that. I didn't cut anything off of it. Right. No, my my priority one is I always try to upgrade my snapper cases so I can get them the hell out of my shelf. But you'll save space this way, and you can do the same thing with regular DVD sleeves. All you'll need to do is just fold the, the DVD a certain way, the sleeve, right at one of the creases, and stick the sleeve in there with the, with the DVD. You can save a lot of room that way, boss. T3 doesn't like that you're destroying the snapper cases. So... The he snapper gave, cases deserve to be destroyed. He, he, <laughs> he gave me a, a movie like that one time. I think it was 13 Ghosts. Like, I borrowed 13 Ghosts off of him. And um, he gave me the... I was like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> it's like... It was flat now like that with the movie, like, 
you know, in a case. I'm like, what the hell? I didn't realize that that's what you were doing, though. Well, the movie trying. was in a, let's see if I've got one of them here. It was in one of these. So it's not like the movie's just sliding around in there, right? So the movie is protected on the inside of the, the cardboard, is what I'm saying. Sick. So I know what I'm what doing. Are you, God damn it. What are you guys doing? <laughs> What are you guys doing currently now? Like, and and, and I uh, want to get into the chat too. Like, if anybody in the chat currently, we're talking right this second, are doing to create more space, I'm curious. Now, personally, me, like, I don't the digitizing thing and putting them all on hard drives, not my thing. Putting them in in, you know, the the folders like you were talking about, like we did with our old CDs back in the day in our car. You know, I, man, what that? I'm not in. I'm not into that either. Uh, I'm just curious on, on what you guys are doing um, in the chat and for you guys now, like what you guys are doing uh, right now. And oh. we also got to we also got to uh, answer Gu Gus's question on the super chat, which was yeah, we, we bought can... any ten for ten stuff. Oh, I I, I have that, yes, yeah. but not and not a lot. I think I bought I don't know three or four maybe. I bought like one a day. I think I'm averaging out. Like the first day, I bought like two or three movies. And then like one a day, I'm pretty much, and I'm hoping like there's going to be a couple of them, like uh, uh girl school screamers. That's one I want to get for $10. Uh, I, same. <laughs> <laughs> that's same for me though. I bought like a couple, like the first couple of days. And then I've just bought like, I didn't buy any um, today. So that was the first day I didn't buy anything. Whatsoever. You didn't get killer to lie. No, I mean, I was going to, but then I'm like, man, I ain't never going to fucking watch that. And speaking of space issues, got like, George Buck be, flower in it. You said it yourself. Yeah, that'll just be something else, though, that I have to figure out what the hell I'm going to do with. So. Could be another classic when he, like when he played uh, in uh, The Berserker. That was a classic. If anybody's never seen that performance, you need Pappy to check Nyquist, Bulls. I think that was his <laughs> name. <laughs> Pappy Nyquil. That's his name. So, but for what I'm doing now, I think I've found a pretty good solution because. A lot of you guys know that I took out all the DVDs, aside from Anchor Bay. Anchor Bay's on the bottom row. Kept my Anchor Bay's out. But I was like, I've got to, because this shit was stacked up, man. It was like six foot high stacks of like a lot of these boutique labels that I've been buying. Arrow, Vinegar Syndrome, Kino, even those cocksuckers at Severn. I've got some other stuff. I really, I, I don't want it. I should sell it. Speaking of which. Look, boss. And I haven't opened it yet. So if somebody yeah. is interested, hundred and I'm thinking like a hundred and hundred and fifty. God damn, buddy. Why you always want to try to like sell shit to damn high for? Well, I, I saw one sell for one seventy one twenty five. There you go. Day. It's well, a deal. Yeah, yeah maybe you're right. Maybe you're so, right. So I got another little prop here though. What I found is and I wanted to find something that I could keep them in some kind of order to where I would know where they're at. It would be easy to get to. And I got these on Amazon and they're not that expensive. I think you can get six of them for like $30 or something. And each one holds like 40 discs, 40 DVDs. What is in the... the that's like, that's like bagging your dvds 2.0 look at that thing yeah so that's this a is... fucking gym bag <laughs> <laughs> you got a gym bag full of dvds you know so... though i would buy one of the i would buy one of those and like if you were like when we were kids and it's like hey i'm gonna sleep over and you walk in to pick those like <laughs> this we're gonna watch out yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah motherfucker let's so go sick. it's like a boom box oh, that's all awesome. i love it I've so, never seen anything like that, but I would probably buy that. Do you know what yeah, you're going to do? Why don't you just put that whole thing on a shelf? Like, and just do it. Well, that's the thing. It can be its own shelf. Hell is fucking Hey, boy. <laughs> Curl and I in bags. <laughs> but, like, the, the cool thing about this is, is you can keep all, oh, I kept God. all this stuff in kind of alphabetical order. <laughs> So uh -huh. I can stack it alphabetically. I can find this shit. And my How much, my plan is, what are you I'm going to I'm going to stack them out in the storage <laughs> building. So they'll be there. They'll be when I, you know, if I need to watch <laughs> oh, the bad God. seed or oh, they're going to be in a storage here. unit. Well, my back behind the house, I have this you know storage building out there. 
the Amityville sequels and American Crime, the Blob remake, Cannibal Holocaust, all these readily available. It's got a zipper on the front. Classics. It's gonna be well protected. I, think I that's mean, that's I've never I've never seen that before. To be honest, I've never seen someone do that. I mean, I, was it just kind of a luck of the draw that those fit so snug in there like that? No, they're made for DVDs and games and stuff. Also, they're not made for curling irons then. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but that I mean, talk about bagging blue. Like I think you you might have like taken the bagging DVDs to like a new level. Oh. Like you actually bagged a bunch at once. That's right, Sick. forty per case. And like I said, thirty dollars for six pack of them. So I mean, you could get thousands. You could hold thousands of them for little to no money. Probably what under a hundred dollars. But you know what you could do is you can sound kind of cooler. Like when you talk about it, you can be like, yeah, this is like my main collection here. But then in the back, I have this whole storage center with all my bagged DVDs and bagged Blu-rays. Like the when you say it like archive. that, then people, are, the collectors are going to be like, oh, wow, he's got a whole other place with all his bagged stuff. The CKA yeah. collection. Well, and yeah. here's the yeah. thing, too. I have totes in this other room. I have like a bunch of them out there just sitting, you know, stacked up like non non-horror stuff. So I would, I would probably like if I if I made the room, I could have that whole building just be like a big fucking library of right, of like movies. You could put it, make them almost I, look like shelves. Yeah, I actually thought about doing this. I don't know if you guys have ever thought about this, but like for a, like a um, temperature controlled storage unit, has anybody considered that? I don't think I could do it. I think I would I, at that. If I'm at that point, I think that I'm I've got a big issue. Because then at that point, it's kind of like you don't even really, they're not even in your possession, really. You know, like I'm not going to, like, I need to have access to them. Like, I don't know. I, I just don't, I think if it gets to that point, I'm, I know that there's something wrong. Like, I can't let it get to that point. Garrett's um, like the fucking Highlander. He needs to be around him so he can draw. Well, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm, very, I'm very particular about what I do and uh, with them. Like, I almost feel like I would try to sell a lot off to like slim down, not having to go that route. Um, and I would start obviously with, you know, the bins of non horror DVDs that I've had doubles of. Like I, I don't need those. You know, I technically could sell those now. Like I don't need two editions of Knocked Up. Like I don't even need one to be honest in my collection. You like, really don't. You know, like I'm I'm thinking like in that route where I'm almost at a point where if I go through my non horror, horror is very different to me. If I go through like my non horror comedies. And, and I look at some of the comics and be like, this movie sucks. I don't know why I have it. Like, I'm at a point where it's gone. Like, I'll just put it away into a tote or, you know, sell it and like a used store and, you know, towards something else. I mean, that's kind of where I'm at right now when it comes to that horror. I usually kind of leave alone. Um, I but, think for a lot of people, too, it's very important to it, – it's okay to be picky sometimes. Like, for me – when it comes to mainstream movies, I don't buy them. I don't buy mainstream films like newer movies. Most newer right. horror movies I don't get. I'm fine with the digital copies of those. And I think like some movies, it, honestly, like think to yourself, okay, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 was one that just popped into my head. People run out and got it because, oh, it looked like, I remember we were on the, the mid-level show Everybody loved the cover because it looked like the Sega the Genesis game. game, right? Yeah. And my answer was, well, if you love the cover of the Sega Genesis game, buy the goddamn fucking Sega Genesis game. But I like the first Sonic movie. And I know my son is going to want to watch those. So to me, it was like, okay, well, I like the first Sonic. Sonic is, is nostalgia for me. So plus this looks like the game. He's going to want to watch it. So to me, Sonic was like a no-brainer. And I'll buy Mario when it comes out, too. Oh, but, I would probably you know, <laughs> when it comes to a I lot of the mainstream, like, like I don't buy Marvel. Like I don't have, I think I have a couple Marvel movies. Like it might, like I have guardians. Cause I did like that one. I have the Spider-Man's cause I did like that one. I actually really liked the, that new Spider-Man, like the animated one multiverse. Like that was a really cool movie, but you know, anything like Avengers or any of those Dr. Strange and all that stuff. Like I don't own any of that stuff because Thank that's God. just not my jam. Like, you know, maybe someday my son becomes obsessed with that stuff and I have to buy them, but they're currently not in my collection and I it's don't just, have any. Um, that's a whole, that's a library in itself, the fucking Marvel. Right, 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 right. right. Really I'm going to tell, I'm going to tell all my kids that uh, Marvel films are evil and from the devil. 
<laughs> so they'll be scared of them or something. I'm going to try to figure out something and be like, if you play them backwards, you conjure Satan up, so you don't want to do that. Like, or if you're you like most kids, just say it's like a Christian movie or something. Most kids will stay away from it then. That's right. <laughs> I'm gonna make up. It's something. tough being a collector because it's an easy. It's easy to just go digital. It's easy to just stream and not buy. But when you've got that collector mentality, and I've had it my whole life, and I and, and I'm curious as we talk about this with people in the chat and you guys too. Like, did you know that you were like you had a mentality as a Woo! collector, like at a young age? Because I sure did. Everything I was into as a kid, 200. I friggin' wanted everything about it. It could have been uh, Ninja Turtles, He Man, Go GI Joes, like. Once I got my mind on something that I enjoyed, I wanted it all. That's and exactly. I, and that's I exactly. Put them all together, and I had exactly. carrying yeah. cases. Like it just never ended. I mean, I told this so, story on on some podcast. I went to McDonald's and got like a freaking Mario toy one day, and then it was like I needed to try to get go home and dig out every McDonald's action figure that I ever got and like put them together. Like I was like, like wrestling. I've Here's, always had that issue. Here's the weird part, Gary. That's usually like an only child kind of thing. But you had like siblings, I'm pretty I, sure. Right? I have a brother, but he was he was very similar to, but no, he's not very similar. He liked all that <laughs> stuff, but he wasn't to that extent like I was, right? Like he liked to have it and he would play with me and all that stuff and we'd do stuff together. But I was always the one that was like, okay, things have to be this way or You're organized obsessed. and together. I was, and he never had that. So See, he's the same thing now. Like he likes all that stuff, but he doesn't. He, but you know, I was I was exactly the same way though growing up. Like I got into these different phases, and I would have to like get everything. Like I had to get all the WWF Hasbro figures, and I had to get all of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when that crap came out. And like it just went from like one thing to another thing. GI Joes, like all that stuff, like together, and had to buy as much of it as humanly possible. And like you said, like keep it together. And What's like, like, like um a few years ago before we started doing the show again like i would talk to garrett more about wrestling figures and shit and he still get i think you still get the wrestling figures pretty hardcore and stuff but i was like i just don't have anywhere for it it's something that i needed to quit because you're not really like with me i only have one room really to for this stuff and if you find that you're putting most of your stuff in totes and you're not really enjoying it or anything which it was what was starting to happen with those wrestling figures. I was like, I've just got to, I've got to cut that out. Like I can't buy movies, records, mm -hmm. you know, uh, video games and stuff at the time. I've got to say no to something, you know, stop. Yeah. It's hard, man. I, I totally agree. And wrestling figures, like, yeah, I was still getting them and they weren't, they were just staying in piles or totes. And I was like, in my head, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know what? My son might want to, you know, play with them because me growing up, like yeah. they were, they were everything to me. Like Saturday morning, I'd come out of the, in the living room and I'd watch cartoons and eat breakfast and I'd have my Hasbro ring and my bag full of Galoobs and Hasbros. I'd dump them out on the floor and I would spend doing like Royal Rumbles and stuff while I watched cartoons basically leading up to WF superstars that came on at like 11 o'clock. Like that in my brain is like every Saturday for years. So in my head, I'm thinking, well, if I get a lot of these figures now, then when he gets to be like I was, where he wants to play with them all the time, then I'll have them and I won't have to go out. But, you know, I don't even know if that's ever going to happen, right? See, I was, I'm was i exactly the same way, though, man. Like, I keep in my mind thinking, okay, I'll have all this stuff to give to my kids. like, And so, like, it'll be worth something one day. And it won't be like a story like my parents told me when they were growing up where – they had all these baseball cards that would have been worth a fortune, but they sold all the shit. Like, I don't know how many times I heard that story from my dad. Like, he had all these universal monster kits that he would build that would now be worth a fortune. He had all these baseball cards and, like, all this other stuff. that would be. And I never wanted that to be the case. Like, I wanted to keep the stuff and eventually, like, give it. But I've come to realize one very important thing is my kids don't give a shit about any of the stuff that I have. Well, that's usually how it works. So it's like... Yeah. They're into like their own like whatever you know TikToky ish kind of shit that they're into now. So, like they don't care about any of the stuff in my collection except maybe like Piper's into like um, guitar now. So, but and I've got like five hundred guitars now. So maybe one day she'll. She's kind of into movies too, or she was. I don't she, know yeah, I mean, it. she's into horror films and stuff like that. So maybe she'll take over the collection. But I don't think that they think as much about or would care as much about that as we do. 
just thinking about like the idea of it. I don't think it's as important. Uh, so I don't know. Now, do you find that? Um, and again, I don't know if it's different having girls or not, but like, do you find that you, they're at an age where you can be like, Hey, do you guys want to watch this new movie that <laughs> came mo- out that you want to watch? Can you I can't say anything serious. This guy. <laughs> yeah. I like the sound of that. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, so I had to really start thinning things out. Like my wrestling stuff that I was buying, like I've sold anything that predates like anything after at attitude era or after I've sold. So now all the things that I have that are current, like Mattel figures are from like 2000 down basically ish. So like, for instance, I'll keep like anything like new generation or eighties or Dude, early nineties. I see like, some cool shit from time to time too, that I'd oh, love yeah. to get. Like there's yeah. a ultimate edition box set of Terry Funk and Hulk Hogan from like 80, like 86 or something era when Hulk Hogan had the white Hulkamania shirt and shit. Yep. Which back in the day, I would have I would have fucking ordered that day one, but I kind of I got to back away and do it. Nope, can't do it, boss. But you know, but, I I see Corey in here, and he makes a really good point. And I've thought about this too. I'm thinking to myself, what if something happened to me? Like my I'm gonna ha- leave this for people to try to figure out what the frick to do with all this <laughs> well, shit. Like that's what my I, dad I've, did. I've thought <laughs> about it. You know, <laughs> I've thought about that, and I'm like. What's going to happen here? Is it just going to be like yard sale? Come and take it. I'm like, I almost got to assign this to like my brother and basically be like, dude, like sp- take a little bit of the money, split it with other people. But like, you've got to like take the time and like eBay it and all that shit. Like, I don't what, what's and anybody. Not, do? And that's you're like a full time. That. That'd yeah. be a full time job, man. Really? I mean, think of all the stuff that you've got. I know. I've th- I have thought about that. At the, oh, the, time, the you know? issue, the issue, because that's exactly what my dad did. He probably has like had uh seven seven full drum kits and i'm thinking probably like 15 to 20 guitars right so now i've just got all this stuff like you can't store that kind of stuff i mean meaning like you can't put it out in like a garage or something like that because it ruins it it'll warp the necks of the guitars it'll warp your drum casings and things like that like you you've got to keep it somewhere like temperature controlled so I've got all this shit, like either in the house or in like, you know, storage buildings, things like that. So that's what happens. I mean, I'll speak from experience and mm-hmm. like, unless mm-hmm. you're just going to sell all that stuff immediately. And like, that's, a, that's a huge undertaking to do that too. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. And that's mm-hmm. why I'm hoping that maybe like, for whatever reason, my, something doesn't happen to me earlier, but my son gets to an age where he's kind of showing interest and he can just take it over and like run with it because you know kids now are going to be so much more efficient when it comes to things like selling on ebay or wherever that heck the next thing is like they're gonna they're gonna be more efficient than we were because they're gonna they're gonna grow up with it so you know i think a kid once they get to a certain age will know like okay if i want to dump this here's where i gotta do it is it a live auction on you know whatnot or whatever the hell it is but i mean that's what i'm kind of hoping and i saw Somebody in here, Wes, I think, just said he got the Mega Power set. I just got that in the mail today, so I hear you. I haven't, I haven't opened it yet. <laughs> it doesn't stop. Like it, posters, figures, and movies are probably like the three big ones yeah. for me right now. Well, somebody yeah. asked us earlier. Uh, I think it was the Cable uh, Fifty Four guy. Yeah, I didn't get rid of any of all of my posters. I still have pretty much. I mean, I may have sold a couple of them here and there, but. Mm-hmm. The majority of the stuff that you guys see in those old videos, I still have. And I think, honestly, that's probably the jackpot. And that's what I told Sarah. I'm like, that that collection is probably worth more than all of the movies that I own. Oh, yeah. Uh, So that's what you'll want to definitely research and shit like that Uh, here's the thing about posters though they're the probably the easiest things to store just because like pre-1988 most of them came folded anyway Mm -hmm. so like you know you can put them in just about anything as long as they're like in some sort of protective cases and things like that like now when it gets to like your the ones that are not that that are roll posters then it gets a little bit trickier because you got to get the tubes and then that's going to be a whole other like storage issue and things like that or these backers that we got, like that we bought a long time ago, that are like basically like giant comic book style mm-hmm. backers. You know what I mean? That you backers, my god, backers. But 
yeah, that just leads to more space issues. Well, but, yeah. posters is another cool thing to talk about because, and, I, and someone in here says you guys should do an auction. We are going to be doing a live auction pretty damn soon, actually. So keep your eyes out for that. But um, yeah, being a big poster guy, like you're right, like those are those are some big ticket items. Uh, I just sold a poster today for three hundred bucks. Um, I mean, I it's, they are they are good, nice ticket <sighs> items. Um, I'm looking to sell. Uh, quite a bit of my screen prints that are uh, another valuable item um, i know just what? because i need to make shelving i need to make space for new stuff coming in that's basically why Our, and obviously uh, you look at a lot of the things and you're like this will never hit the wall um mm -hmm. but tubes are the issue right like i have so many tubes that i'm like this sucks like the flats are easy like you said you box them boom you're golden the tubes suck because you don't want to put them in an attic or anything like that either uh, um and another thing was I have a I have someone who who gives me posters from the theater, which I I luckily get like a lot of cool ones. But sometimes they'll just say, hey, I got these ones and they'll send it to me. And I'm like, dude, I don't need any of these. So I have like a lot of those like jungle. What's the one with the rock? The Disney jungle book, jungle, oh, jungle cruise or, like, or something. Like I that. have like two of those. Like, I'm not yeah. going to what am I going to do with those? Like, I'm, I'm thinking like I just got to get a day and just like list them or something. Like I have a lot of like mainstream ones, like like um, Sing or whatever, like some kids movie or whatever. Like I have some of those. Like I have a bunch of those just in a pile that I'm like, I don't. They're just taking up floor space. I got to get rid of these things, and I hate throwing them out. You know. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's what the that's true, but that's what the that's what the, the show is uh, all about. I, it's a popular show. We just hit over 200 people earlier. Oh, thank you guys so much. It's pretty huge. I didn't know yeah. how, you know, I, the physical media shows always do very well, but you, something like this is kind of niche because I don't know if a lot of these people, and I want to get your guys' opinions on that, not to be judgmental towards any of you because we love all of you, but some of the newer collectors. Now, our buddy mid-level is kind of a newer collector. He's one of them. I don't think he's been collecting movies as long as we have. So some of the younger generation, any advice that you guys would give them on kind of future-proofing your collection to make sure that you don't end up like, you know, at least me and Uncle Bill having to put some of this shit out there in storage and, you know, these, these uh, boom boxes and stuff like that. I do easy stuff. Um, number Go ahead, one, I, yeah. Number one, don't buy the same movie twice for different covers or whatever. Don't do that because that's just more shelf space. That that's I've I've gone down that road. It's not it's not fun. Like when like for instance, I showed it yesterday. Like I still have it here for my Evil <laughs> Evil Dead video. Like I bought these like at the time because. This had a bonus disc from Best Buy. This had a steel book. So I was like, oh, I'm getting both of them. I don't need to do this. Like, this wasn't something that I needed to do um, back back then. And I did that with a lot of stuff, not just Evil Dead, but like a lot of different movies. Another thing, too, is be a little bit more picky with what you're buying. Like, it doesn't seem like it now, but at the end, when all of a sudden you do run out of space, you're like, why do I have this? And, you know, the person I might be referencing is probably in here. I busted his balls about it. But, um, you know, somebody posted like, Hey, my hall day or whatever. And they had a stack of movies and one was like Marine <laughs> four. And it's like, dude, like, don't like, don't waste your time on that shit. Like if, if it's, if you're going to watch it once and it's like just kind of a random movie, like those are the movies I'd probably stream because it in eventually you're going to look back and you're going to look and you're going to be like, I could use some of the space. Why am I filling it with, with garbage? Um, that's like my two big ones is like, buying the same movie multiple times and buying things just to buy things and think and you need deals everything. too. Like the, the 10 for 10 is a good example of just when you see a deal and I know I've always been this way and that's how I ended up with a ton of DVDs, you know, back in the day, deep discount had their 25% off sale. I would, mm -hmm. I I'm not kidding. I had a notepad file of crap that I was going to get on the next 25% off sale. So you, I would say be more uh, selective on what you're going to get. I mean, I can say that, but I also bought Killers to Lot today for $10. <laughs> Somebody but, made a well, good point in there. Folk, that, narrow your focus, maybe. Like, for me, horror has always been number one, and the other stuff was always like, 
I'll get what I like. Horror was like, I'm going to get everything and bat and everything else. Like other genres was like, I'm going to get what I like. So that's kind of where I kind of was at a point. Um, but <laughs> Bob, I actually have Marine six. I got it at big lots for like 75 cents. On board. <laughs> Another example Bro, of the, I was of trying the to deal. keep it conspicuous, uh, man, you know? <laughs> Oh my God. It's so I, here, here's what I would say too. And it goes to what CK was saying a second ago. Like All I do, the, I do the same thing, but like, honestly, these sales are the same thing as like when any like store has a sale where they put like stuff on clearance that nobody really wants anymore because really what they're, they're doing is they're just getting people to buy shit. They don't need. I mean, these films are not any kind of films that we would normally buy. And now we're buying them just because we're never going to watch them. We're buying them just because they were marked down. The t- and it seems like a good deal. So we're buying the deal. We're not actually buying the fucking movie. We're just like, oh, this is like much cheaper than it was. I pray to God. I, that like, I needed Master of the World on Blu-ray. <laughs> no, you did. And you know that you did. But it's just like, it just seems like, wow, that's such an amazing deal. I've got to have it. But in the end, like you would have never bought that had that fucking deal not existed like that one not even been on your radar or anything else like that so i just think that a lot of this stuff that we buy on these specials or like and when they have these like sales it really is more of just like a fear of missing out kind of thing than it is actual shit that we need or would watch or anything Do you guys like that. remember though other back in the day other sites to get good deals and stuff i remember GoHastings.com was another one for used stuff. Like, I went there a lot because they had, like, crazy cheap prices. Uh, movie Gallery was was one, I think. Yeah, Movie Gallery had used stuff, too. Yeah, I bought a lot oh, of stuff. Family Video, maybe? Maybe it, was, maybe it was Family Video. Family Video was, like, they just went out of business, but before that, I was still buying stuff off their website. They were pretty uh, pretty popular still. CD yeah, I mean, Deep Universe. Discount was That's my big one, school. really. Which one? CD Universe. Oh, that's very. Did you guys do a lot of deep discount back in the day? I feel like that was my go-to because that was like the only thing that I knew where it was like spend twenty five dollars you get free shipping or something like that's where like it was the that was why it was my jam. Not only the prices were good, but it was like the first site I remember was offering free shipping uh, back in the day if you bought a certain amount. And I used to um, uh, bought a lot on that. The early days of DVD. I've talked about this before, but this is just a very nostalgic time period for me is because I, I discovered a lot of these movies that way is I got them on Amazon through this click program online where you just clicked on crap for like an hour a day. And after a week or so you would have enough points to cash out like a $25 gift card and the Amazon gift card, I would get some random anchor Bay movie most of the time on that, like one a week. And I built up a collection, a lot of Euro horror stuff that way. That, I remember you talking about that. That's so funny. Do you remember the, the other good one was when you go to Blockbuster and it was like the, the five for 25 deals or whatever. Movie gallery. That was that a too. big one for me. Yeah. Like were, you'd yeah. go in there and house those. Yeah. Things they would sure. put new ones out at a particular day and I would go each week. And I got a lot of like really shitty lines gate low budget mm-hmm. stuff that way yeah. like santa slay i think i got i think a lot movies. of those uh see no evil movies we got that way yeah like, eden lake like, and all that stuff yeah all the what was that series called that they did they dimension all, extreme or whatever no it was like um something to, like films to die for or something oh yeah like that. films to die for yeah. yeah eight films to die for yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. there's a lot of those yeah so i mean it's a cool stream. Like we could go on for hours um, talking about this kind of stuff. I feel like, but I, I really just feel like the big ones for me is I utilize my space wisely. I look for dead space that, that I know is that I can maybe customize a shelf to fit in. Um, like I said, I just bought one of those spinner shelves, which wasn't really something in the cards that I wanted to do per se. But for one, I'm like, you know what? It would fit right here. There's nothing going on over here in this room. Um, it's kind of a cool concept because it reminds me of like the old eighties, like spinners. So it's like, okay, that kind of fits the theme of the room and all this other stuff. So I'm excited to get that. I, it should be here probably this weekend, but um, that's going to grab me an extra 600, maybe a little bit less uh, movies to get on there. So I'm going to probably rearrange what I have in certain spots, but use your space wisely. And like Wes said at the beginning is if you have the wall, 
use the wall. Uh oh, bulls! Bug God Betty is back. Oh Jesus! What's well, so when you're coming to Pike County, pretty boy? <laughs> uh, I don't know. We're working on it actually. Uh, oh God. Yeah, we need to do like a special, like a streaming special or a, or a movie or something. Garrett comes to At- Appalachia. I would love to, man. That would um, be a great documentary. We'll get Kelly Markup down here to film that. We we'll get you kid. to try some biscuits and gravy for the first time. Yeah, when is uh when's the Scarefest thing? I would love to come down and hang out with you guys. How far are you from there? Like, if I came to you guys, hung out, then we went there. Was that a huge? No, it's like probably two hours. A couple of hours. Yeah. See, I wouldn't mind doing that. Who's It'd got be room like at their house? Driving out? across. Uh, uh, it Rhode ain't Island fucking ain't me. Kevin. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> Wes, you got you got a you got a guest bedroom over there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's rock, kid. Um, Rad Pack is supposed to do a is supposed to do a big meet up uh in where is kentucky <laughs> so i don't know it'd be it'll be so i would love to come States. down there for sure yeah, because we'll i would just to love to that. see where like your town like i would just i would just love to see it because all i've seen is into the pit and i feel like i look and i'm Dude, like if it's still I anything wish... like that now i feel like i'd be like 20 years behind of what i'm it's, where i'm living it's gonna be like uh barbarian <laughs> Gary yeah. down here like yeah, you're going to the basement under the floor <laughs> yeah uh, what are you trying to say? I won't make out on a live? Is that what you're saying? There's a lot of people that are telling you pulse. not to do it. Yeah, They could oh, get, you, get you hooked on some blue pills and you'll be stuck here. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think, I think I would love... I think I want to try to go to Scarefest next year because it feels like everybody uses that as a meeting ground. It's an easy enough place for, for me to go. Yeah, I had um, enough people asking us about scary. I, I don't like conventions, but fuck it. I would fucking go. I don't you'd care. have to go. Just get a table. It's we could goal. take you to the Strand. Hell yeah. Well, at least the outside of it. We can't get in there anymore. But, uh, <laughs> it's a damn shame. <laughs> the mayor says, I would look like Paulie Shaw driving a tractor singing, <laughs> thank God I'm a country boy. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, I mean, if anybody has any questions or anything, too, we got a little bit of time to to get into that. But, I mean, I think it would cover pretty much everything. Like, there's a lot of different ways. And I think probably the best advice, like we were saying, pick something. Like, if you're, if you're picking Marvel movies and superhero movies, if you love that, then you can make an entire collection out of that. Um, or horror stuff. That's mainly what I get. I don't really get non-genre stuff at all, aside from... Some of the movies Sarah gets. That's about it. I got a question. And this is one that's like haunted me for years now. What would you tell like either your kids, family, other collectors about like in terms of like collecting figures and things like that? Open them or keep them in the box? Um... Again, I'm going to say if it's a kid, it depends on what the figure is. If it's like like a figure, like a wrestling figure, I'd probably say open it and enjoy it because think about how much we enjoyed those damn Hasbros. And even still, Hasbros now, even though they're opened, are still pretty valuable to people. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's an adult like me, like all my stuff is boxed. But if my son at some point become so obsessed with wrestling, I probably would let him open them. And I would probably join in on the fun with him of like – you know, doing storylines or whatever it is that there, but like as a kid, I would like say be a kid, but if all of a sudden they come home with like, I don't know, it's, you look at it and you're like, this is a, a collectible. This isn't a figure. Like maybe, maybe box it up, whatever. But, um, I would, Mel I would let a all kid of be her, a kid. Uh, Funko pops in the box. I, I saw that today in the video. If I could go back and do it over, I would take every goddamn figure out. Like, but now at this point, I'm too like invested in it. But just look how beautiful that that artwork is. I right? have him, but he's out of the box. Um, I don't have him in the box anymore. I mean, scared glow. He glows in the dark, pulls. But you know what else, too, Uncle Bill and I've thought about this as well. Like, even that, even that wall that I have access to in my library that's got all the autographs on it. A part of me was like, man, I wish I could get like a huge glass shelf and then i would take my figures out and make like little displays like in the glass uh, yeah, shelf like yeah i would probably do that and, and what's nice is at least some of the new neck is you can always put them back in the box if you ever wanted to like 
and not pretend they never opened them, but like just as far as to display them a different way. Like that, those that new is, boxes, you can do that. That is kind of my ultimate um, goal is to get one of those glass display cases, kind of like they've got at comic book shops and things like that, where they keep things in and try to like display like as many figures mm. and things like that as I can. I almost get. think that those, those take up more room than they're worth though. They do, but like the display factor of it is amazing. Like just well, the, then I think if they're displayed, you at least feel better about having them. You know, like that's the problem when they're when they're in the box and they're just kind of shoved away in like a corner, like mine are and his are. It's kind of like you have them, but at the same time, it's like it, they don't mean as much. Also, they make the new ones now that like kind of like rotate, right? So you can hold more and shit like that. So yeah, never by day one. That's good advice, actually. It's very good advice. Yeah, you can save a but, lot of money that way, especially. I will on say, I will movies. say, it depends. If it's if it's something like limited, right, and you see like it, you then I would say you have to buy day one. But mainstream stuff, nah, don't buy don't buy day one. What do you think about uh, avoid the YOLO mentality, which is the you only live once mentality? Which I know that a lot of people have that. I've had that at times where you're just kind of like, ah, well, fuck it, like you know, you're all gonna die. <laughs> Anyway, especially when, especially when COVID was around, I man, I was it's buying shit like crazy. On I was Jennifer like, you know. stuff, both. Yeah. those are actually really good good tips. Yeah, they um, are. for most people. But you know, as we know, being collectors, sometimes those are hard to fight, right? Like the YOLO mentality, I'm pretty good with that. It depends, right? Like there's specific things that I'm just like, I don't care. Like I've always wanted, I need it. Like if it's the Chucky doll or. Maybe I didn't have enough money at that day to do it. I'll be like, screw it. I'm going to figure out a way. Um, there's specific things that I that I would be like that with. But the day one is a great, great advice. Blind buy is another great advice. Um, keeping up with the Joneses, I feel like, is another great one, especially for younger collectors um, out there because – it's tough, man. When you see that people are getting things, and I feel it, you wanna you wanna get it too. And if you can't, if it's not in your means, then don't feel like you have to do it, or you're not as good as, or whatever. Because I've seen that happen with a lot of people. Um, they don't well, feel as adequate of a collector because they just can't afford what other people can. And they, they got that's why I said before, make up your own rules, right? Like, um, and and do that. No, well, but here's the thing, like, the way YouTube is now, man, you've got, I would say, hundreds of channels of people that solely, like, collect and display physical media. And, like, their collections are insane. And there's no way that any kind of, like, normal person could keep up with that shit. And if you try, you're probably going to go bankrupt at this point because, like... Mm. I mean, there's just too many of them anymore. So trying to keep up with what people are doing and like these collections that people have nowadays, there's just no way. You'd have to be collecting for 20 or 30 years. So my connection's been better to not both. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's not Definitely. froze up one time. Yeah. Right? God damn it. I figured it out. And you, and you, um, and you hit it right on the head is that you guys might look at us and, and say, wow, you guys get everything. But this is like a 20 something year project right like it wasn't like i started last year and i just got all this stuff like what's nice about it now is a lot of the times all the stuff we got a lot of stuff out of the way early when i was buying dvds for two dollars used like building up a collection now it's just kind of like you know filling in some of the gaps of course it gets hard when like a lot of these titles that we want to get are like forty dollars a pop like it it hurts sometimes you know I kind of agree with this too. Like you become like a, <laughs> you're running a mini museum. Yeah. yeah, it's I'm kind of there actually. Uh, old Curly Jaws wants you to check your messenger because he sent you some softcore porn of himself. Now let me ask you guys. This is a little bit off topic. As collectors, is there anything that you don't really collect that you kind of feel like you know what? I wish I did a little bit more, and maybe someday I may get into that realm. When it comes to maybe more like on the movies end of it, like, like movie related. Like for instance, for me, I have like zero busts and a part of me is kind of like, you know what? Like I wouldn't, I kind of wish I did have some, um, I never went down that route collecting busts, but there's some pretty cool ones out there. And when, I got that spinner shelf. I said to myself, you know what? There's this flat top on it. 
And I'm like, I think my goal is going to be to get one really cool bust and display it up on top of that thing because it's a perfect spot for it. Um, and it's always something I've kind of wanted, but I've never dipped my toe into that game. So like when I show my movie room and stuff, I see other people like Christian's got a lot of busts. Like I have none. Um, and it's kind of a, an area of the collecting community that I kind of wish I had a couple. I was thinking the one thing I wish I would have gotten into early on was the Mondo posters and things like that. Hmm. Like not just for the fact they're worth a damn fortune nowadays, but just because they're really, really cool. And I never, ever bought any of those. I don't think I have any of those. I think the most fun, and this is kind of, this is probably surprising to you guys. And if I had an endless amount of space and money, maybe not an endless amount of money, but a decent, decent income, you know, as far as a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, I would definitely start a collection of 35 millimeter films. Like, when we did the... Uh, uh, don't you fucking dare start that again. Well, well, I'm not. I'm just saying that takes up a ton of space. But I was like, I thought that that was probably one of the more, the more fun um, things that I ever... I didn't really collect those. We got those for the screenings that we did. But if I had the space, like I know Tarantino collects the 35 millimeter film. Yeah. Give you an example. I think that I would get off on that. Yeah, I mean, I could see that because that's like something completely unique, you know. Like, and I would say you could turn a major profit on that too. Speaking point. of which, I I have thirty five millimeter film trailers left that I may put up on auction soon. Who's to say? Let's ask Tom Atkins. Show S'mores and says, "What room do I have the Showbiz Pizza Band in?" I wish. I wish I had that. <laughs> That'd be so awesome. Well, that's another thing, Gary. You got to stay down here a few days because one of the all, I think there's two left in the United States. One of them is within driving distance of where we live. Showbiz. So it's yeah, yeah, it's a it's a Billy Bob's Wonderland is what they call I'd it. But it's the Showbiz there. Pizza chain or whatever with yeah. the band and everything. And it looks like that. when you go in there, it looks like a gymnasium from about 1985. <laughs> I swear to God. I'm, I'm always. Even, I'm not kidding. They haven't changed any. That looks exactly like it did, or as I remember it from going down there as a child. They haven't changed anything in that fucking place. They may have put like some new games in, but the setup of everything in that building is from the '80s. I'd love to go to that, man. We don't have anything like we have a, we have a Chuck E. Cheese here, like we have one or two, I think, but it's not even close. The they same. Did, uh, it's all updated. It's like. It's not even close like what it was. Well, uh, Chuck E. Cheese just ripped off Showbiz Pizza, by the way, if people don't know that. Showbiz Pizza was the first. Um, and they did a documentary about the band itself, the Rock of Fire Explosion, boys. was on Netflix a few years ago. That's a really fun documentary. I don't know if you've... Mm. Garrett, have you seen that one? No, but I love that kind of stuff. I've watched, uh, I've watched a lot of documentaries on like Chuck E. Cheese and you know, showbiz pizza on YouTube. There's, there's some really good ones on there about that, but I haven't seen this thing that you're talking about. No. Yeah. This was professionally done. I think it was Netflix or Amazon had it on. It may still be on streaming somewhere. You'll definitely, I don't know if it had a physical release or anything, but it's definitely worth checking out. So here's, yeah, the I'm very interested. Here's a question I hadn't thought about. If you had the money, what screen use prop would you look? Well, I think Sean Clark's bought all of them now. So yeah, he's got the one I want. Actually, I would I would take um, Alex Winter's jacket from Lost Boys. That's what I would want the the original one. That's still something I'm I'm so I'm after. Um, my buddy's done replicas of it, and we're we're kind of working together and trying to get me one. But um, it's a process, man, because like, you've got to find every you know patch and every piece of tapestry that was on there it's it's a big it's a big process but to have the actual one that sean clark has um yeah and keep your eyes open because he's going to come on my show and we're going to dive deep into those jackets as soon as uh his video is out talking about them you trying to wrestle one away from him gary i'll never be able to i, I can't even imagine how much <laughs> he spent on hey, those. i guarantee oh, we got a sneak peek of those when yeah. we had him on the show a couple of weeks ago he just pulled the fucking uh the alex winter jacket out Shh. 
I can't. Yeah, dude. I, I, like... I kind of, I kind of looked up like what those were going for. I can't even imagine how much he spent on all of them because he got every one. So I, I'm telling you, a small fortune, man. I oh, don't yeah. even know. I don't have money like that. Not even close. No, I mean that's you know he can thank uh, uh, Norman Reedus. Norman Reedus. <laughs> Norman Reedus. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Roll that whole saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. I think for me the ultimate movie prop would be the original Michael Myers mask. Yeah, I mean that's and um, you know who knows what that would go for if it ever came up like. There's one that we know of, but check out that the... horror critic. Jesus. Damn. Now is that for the lot? That was for the lot. The whole lot, or was that just shit? That's some major cash, man. Norman Reedus, he should Norman, be like Norman yeah. Jebus. Yeah. Um. There's another story though about the Myers, like the evidently there may be two of them known now. Originally there were three masks. Um, Sean Clark, this has been almost two years ago now, said that he may have located a second one, but I don't think anything ever came out of that. Hmm. Uh, I think that I would just want something really, really goofy, like the brain from Blood Diner. That would be amazing. <laughs> It's probably yeah, Uncle, not even have Uncle you. Anwar's brain in that thing. A lot of this stuff, though, like we were talking to Paul Ehlers about, like the Madman props and stuff like that. He kept the axe, but that was it. Like all the makeup and the appliances and stuff like that, they probably threw that away. Mm. Do you guys have anything like for screen used? I don't think I do. Screen used, no. Oh I have, no, I do. I have I have a stuff container, screen used stuff container. Uh, I have like they were doing these auctions back in the day where you get a tile from like the bathroom that the guy was laying in and saw. Like I have one of those. I have like you remember the shit that they were doing for a while with Evil Dead, where it was like get a piece of the cabin and like I was... have that. I have that. I got like the dirt and shit. I've got the dirt from like Texas Chainsaw. <laughs> I do have or, something. Like, house Hang on a second. Like, I'll see if I can get it. I've got all that stuff. Like. Franklin around flashlight. the flashlight house that, or wood from it or something. That's a good yeah. fun. I would have never even thought of that, but that would be a cool one. Franklin's flashlight from the that's original. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Evil Dead the real, book. Yeah, the, the, the Necronomicon. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> the original Myers mask worn by Moran is filled with tears, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would ever believe that I... Um, had this either but yeah this is a screen used from rob zombies halloween what the is fuck one is of this the books oh yeah from oh, that's uh, a that's an original screen used book yep well they had it like a hundred of them or something on screen from uh, dr samuel loomis really i have that book but i don't you know i don't think i have that i don't think mine has that back well, yeah, this was, uh, this is not a real book. This is just like a prop book, which. That's great, man. I love that. The inside of it is from something called the fifth horseman. Hmm. Let me go see what mine looks like on the back. Hold up. So they must've got this book on closeout. It's from 2006 and just made these book slips or whatever the hell they're called. Oh, maybe maybe it is kind of the same. Look, I have one. <laughs> oh, there baby! I there don't know if it's go. the same. I don't know if it's the same thing that you have, or if mine might be like a replica. <laughs> what book know. is it? What book is yours? It's nothing. It's blank. Oh, okay. Hmm. That's odd. Holy shit! Yeah, this is this would be awesome. The Bilal from Basket Case, or even the Basket from Basket no. Case. No. But that's um that's something that I've always wanted, right? So that's something in my head. I'm like, why has Trick or Treat Studios not put out a basket with a with a replica Belial? And I would buy that in two seconds. I don't know why that's not. Nobody has ever done that. I never figured out why. Uh, how many damn different editions of the Evil Dead have they done? But they have never done a steel book of the dead. How easy is that? That's true. Yep. But uh, the Elmer puppet, yeah, I don't think they ever came out officially. I think a company made that, but it wasn't official. 
But um, yeah, guys, it's been a fun show, guys. If you guys have any more questions or anything, hit us with them. But yeah, I mean, we hit over two hundred oh, people yeah. tonight. Yeah. What uh, what do you think you're gonna do? Do you guys? Would you guys buy? Do you have room in either of those rooms? for like a spinner shelf or anything like that to like add an extra 600 spots because they're, they're narrow. That's what's nice about them. You know, if you have like a corner or something like that, they would be, they were a little pricey to be honest. I think it was like two fifty for that shelf. Um, I would be more interested in a little shelf like you've got behind you. I think I have room for that. Something like that. I could do the spinner shelf in there in like the, um, around the living room there i think that would be cool to have something like that in there yeah but um everybody definitely i don't have like, to do shit in here anymore i don't know how many likes we got but we don't have enough so like the video and definitely subscribe to both channels i know garrett you're very very close to 2k right yeah man i'm actually like i was like i think i'm 60 away from 2k so, so uh, any possibly, any help would yeah, be beneficial for at sure. least overnight maybe get him to 2k overnight that'd be huge and then tomorrow guys i'll be simulcasting by myself at noon on dead pit and my channel born to be rad and we'll be going through the the new vinegar syndrome sale at noon time so i'm actually um i had some cancellations tomorrow so i'll be set up here Uh, i'll probably go on a little bit before noon so it'll be all it'll be all good um and then when i'm done I'll, i'll head to work but um yeah, so I'll have I won't have a piece of paper or anything like that. I'll probably pull up the site on like a screen share and all that stuff. You don't have to go so, in a closet or anything. Nah, it'll be it'll be <laughs> pro it'll be as pro as possible, guys. So come hang with me if you're around uh, about like quarter of noon tomorrow. That was the best shit I've ever seen. Sorry. Very cool. Yeah, um, and we've got some cool stuff planned. Uh, Patreon request. I know Uncle Bill's not he's not happy about it, but Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. We're going to be doing a fan commentary of that soon. And hopefully we could do Uncle Bill's rankings. I don't know if he's down I want to do that. I want to do that. Oh, I'm down to do it. I'm just saying, like, I'm fine with doing that. But it's just, the thing that I'm more kind of pissed off about is having to watch fucking Friday 13 Part 6 again. Because (laughs) I don't like that movie. And I've seen it like 8 million times. I, I mean, I don't. Garrett's a big fan of part six. Though. Yeah, I love Star. I'm actually going to, I was going to probably f- flip my shit where I see where it lands on your ranking, but we did that last time where I ranked and they critiqued my ranking. And I, I just, that was the last Friday the 13th that we had. So I only thought it would be fitting to do the same thing, but me and Wes will critique UB's ranking this time. And the next time it'll be his and, and then we'll do it for him. But I think it'd be kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know how we do the, um, don't be such a fart head, Uncle Bill. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. We could do um, a round table commentary for part uh, six. We could get a bunch of people on there to watch the movie with us, maybe. Change it up a little bit. That's true. I mean, at least it would keep me from having to, like, really talk about it. Because I don't... <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Uncle Bill, you pussy! Hey, you leave him That's alone. the best part of the movie, really. Oh man, Jason. <laughs> stop! That's so accurate, though. It's exactly how he talks in that movie. Well, did you, did you ever play the game? Did you ever play the Friday Thirteenth game? It's the same. That's all you hear the whole time he comes <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. It's the same like three lines, like over and over and over again. It's funny. Oh, but yeah, we're so we're gonna do both those then, right? I mean, we're gonna do the ranking on Friday the Thirteenth. I think, isn't that the idea? And then do the commentary like at some point. Maybe a few days later. Yeah. Around Friday the 13th. We've done almost all of the Friday the 13th movies at this point. I mean, there's only a handful that we've never done. So, and we've never done six, oddly enough. But Uh, anyway, uh, we appreciate everybody coming out, though. I know Garrett's got his big room tour thing coming up. When is that coming out? Do you know? Uh, it's filmed. It's on the editing room, right in the editing room right now. So uh, I don't. It'll be this month. No, don't get me wrong. But um, the editing what kind is of time are we bit. looking at? How long is it going to be? Uh, I don't know. I think 
I think probably maybe 30 minutes, I'm going to say, possibly. But, um, you know, it, it, it it's, it's going to be in parts. So this is going to be part one. So just be mindful, yeah. It's going to be like, yeah, the, the Star Wars trilogy, boss. Yeah, I mean, I, I wanted to throw that out there just in, 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 you know, passing because I'm sure once I do it, people are going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but um, but I, I wanted to do it this way for for multiple reasons. But um, yeah. So the editing's gonna be cool. It's gonna be fun because we edit it a certain way where it's, you know, I almost did the MTV Cribs basically re remake. So it's gonna be very much like in that same vein where it's gonna be highly edited. Um, so that's gonna take a little while. But I think at the end of the day, it's gonna be pretty cool. So hopefully, it 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 all works out. Mayor's got an interesting one here. We didn't think about who's who's hosting the Saturday edition of the Vinegar Syndrome sale. We still don't know. Um, I mean, I could probably do it. I'm off, but it all depends if all of a sudden I have like plans that I didn't know about. But um, I might be able to do it. Yeah, I'm actually working on Saturday, but we'll figure something out. I don't know. Some of these comments, I'm man. Fucking working. <laughs> But um, yeah, the chat's been amazing tonight. Steve behind the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the confidential. That would be a good. He oh could maybe my god! Do, that. do it, please. Sarah, Sarah to do it. That would be hilarious. <laughs> oh uh, lord, she back. This is all a bunch of shit. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> bunch of boobies and shit on here. <laughs> but uh, yeah it's been a fun show though guys i'm glad that the technical difficulties hopefully are past us now um but uh it's always fun hanging with you guys and the chat and everything and um yeah i mean anything else we got coming up i don't know we gotta we're doing an auction and everything eventually um the Brandon Cronenberg movie Possessor. We got a request in to do that one. I think Carter wants us to do the review of that, which I've never seen it yet. So I'm excited about that. But uh, yeah, I mean, we'll have more stuff coming up for sure. Um, anything else you guys wanted to mention? Um, no, I mean, I actually, you know, I don't, I have things in the works, but nothing set in stone. Um, I think next week we're going to try to release the Rad Pack podcast pilot. So see how that kind of works and it'll be oh. in audio form. And then I think we'll probably release the video version probably a couple of days later, but uh, that that's hopefully it'll, that's another thing. This is going to pretend it's only going to depend on the editing and stuff like that. So we'll see. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Get yeah. into podcast game bulls. Uh, we're going to try something different. See, see what happens there. But uh, that's the only thing I have really planned um, right now. I have a couple like rad company stuff for this month, but the problem is I'm just working on dates to get everybody dated the right way. So um, that's the other big one. Yep. So yeah, we appreciate everybody though. And um, we will catch you guys next time. It's born to be rad.com and dead pit. Dot com. Give us the thumbs up. Up you butt. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a f if you do. I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't let's, care. let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you dare yeah. touch it. Thumbs up. Subscribe and click that bell. Hey everyone, it's Oak Early Jaws. We got some great shirts for you. We got Faces of Death Part 2. We got creepy stories to tell in Kentucky. The Colonel would approve. We also got DeadPit.com. We got DeadPit Radio with the little fucking DeadPit dude on there. We got It Never Ends, a Halloween spoof parody of the new movie. We got It at Night. We got the Rad Pack, Uncle Rad himself. It just gets better and better. So go on and get you some shirts over at Team Public. It just gets better and better, bulls. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows and fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. 
Dead Pits on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears started only one dollar.